for our ceremony. Teresa Whitaker began her career in television in 1987 and now co 5, 6, and 11 p.m. weeknight newscast. Her work has been recognized by several organizations, including the Associated Press, NAACP, Toastmasters International, Sisters Inc., and Girl Scouts. Teresa is passionate about service and is an active member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Teresa is proud of the fact that she is an Army grad. She graduated from Kendrick High School and earned her Associate of Arts degree here at CBCC, where she was inducted into the Alumni Hall of Fame. She earned her BA in mass communication with an emphasis in broadcast journalism from West Georgia College, now the University of West Georgia. Teresa is a member of the Bridge Church of Columbus under the leadership of Pastor Vince Allen, where she accepted her call into the ministry in 2019. Teresa is also a public speaking coach, launching her website, www dot becameraready.com in late 2020, and an author having recently published her first book, Behind the Smile, What the Camera Could Not Capture. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to some and present to all our MC of the hour, Ms. Teresa Whitaker. Thank you so much, Dr. Watkins. Good evening to all of you, those of you who have joined us here in the auditorium, and those of you who are watching virtually, a good evening to you, and welcome to the 2021 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Um, I am back where I began my collegiate career, right here on this campus. Of course, back then, there were two buildings, building one, building two, and I am just so pleased to see all of the growth that's happened here on campus. Uh, my collegiate career, you know, this is a two-year institution, but my, uh, I was on the multi-year plan, not because of my grades, my grades were good, but because I had been accepted at a college in Atlanta. And see, I was the first person in my family to go to college. So there wasn't a whole lot of chat about college and you know what all that entails and how much it's going to cost. So you know when you talk about public versus private institutions, I, I, I was a kid. I had no idea that private was more. So I was set to go off to Atlanta, but a couple of weeks before I was supposed to leave, my parents sat me down and said, "Baby, we've crunched the numbers and." Um, we're just not going to be able to swing it. So I sat out for a while, you know, I pouted. But uh, someone mentioned to me, hey, why don't you come over here to CBCC with us? And to this day, I wish I could remember who that person was because I am so grateful to that person. So I came over here. I absolutely enjoyed it. The professors were wonderful. And one in particular, Dr. Lacey, made me fall so passionately in love with history that when I went off to West Georgia, I minored in history. And I owe it all to him. And so great professors, great learning atmosphere, and I'm just pleased and humbled to be back here tonight um, where I was, thank you, Lord, also inducted into the Hall of Fame a few years ago. So I'm just pleased to be here, so thank you so much for inviting me here tonight. Now, this night would not be possible without the CBCC Board of Directors, the Foundation. So let's give the Foundation a hand tonight as this would not be possible. And that foundation board is led by Rosalind Durner. Let me tell you a little bit about Rosalind. When most people retire, they go fishing, they go on trips, they take it easy, but not Ros Durner. No, she just is not going to take it easy. She is the former communications manager for Rest Rock, also me, West Vaco, that's how I remember it. And since retiring or transitioning, as Roz likes to call it. She's been operating on all cylinders, full speed ahead. 
She's a Phoenix City Rotarian, where she served as the club's president in 2017 and 18. She is a board member of the River Center for Performing Arts in Columbus, and she is the secretary for the East Alabama Chamber of Commerce and a member of Troy University Phoenix City Advisory Council. When she's not at a board meeting or serving in her community, Roz enjoys choreographing liturgical dances. For the church and pair, that means praise dancing, okay? <laughs> she also enjoys writing and watching reruns of one of my favorite, Gunsmoke, and Roz and I have already talked about it. We prefer Festus over Chester. She also enjoys the Rifle Band and Little House on the Prairie. She is a faithful member of Prospect a &B Church in Fortson, Georgia, where ironically, I was baptized and my parent, my mother still holds a membership there and I believe our family has a little plot there. So uh, <laughs> that's where I'm gonna end up. So please, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ross Durden, the Chattahoochee Valley Community College Foundation Chairperson. Thank you, Teresa, and congratulations on being a past inductee. I know Teresa knows firsthand how excited those being inducted this evening must be. A heartfelt welcome to those joining us live as well as those who have uh, joined us virtually. Thank you so much for being a part of this special celebration. I would like to pause for a moment to recognize the CBCC Foundation Board I just want to say, members, there are several here tonight. I am so proud to serve with you. You are passionate about carrying out the mission of the foundation, and it shows. I could not ask for a better team. Thank you so much. Now, along the lines of thank yous and support, kudos and hats off to our Hall of Fame sponsors. This event is the Foundation's only fundraiser, and the sole purpose is to raise funds for student scholarships. It's all about making dreams become true for students who need just a little extra support. And sponsors, you supply that extra support. Thank you so very kindly. A little bit about the foundation of uh, the Hall of Fame before I acknowledge our sponsors. It started in 2008 to recognize individuals connected to CBC in three categories, alumni, service, and athletics. All of the funds raised at the Hall of Fame go to support student scholarships. This year, as of March the 9th, there are 103 sponsors for a combined total of $88,000, the most funds raised in the history of the Hall of Fame. I think that deserves an applause. Thank you so much. Now, those who make that possible, again, our sponsors, we greatly appreciate our platinum sponsor, Aflac. We are pleased to have eight GO sponsors. One is an anonymous supporter. The others are Beam, the citizen of East Alabama, Elizabeth T. Cohen, Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, Houston Clinic, I Heart Media, Tesis, WC Bradley Company, and West Rock. We're grateful for our blue sponsors as well. They are Alabama Power Foundation and Motion House Media. Thank you to our 11 Pirate, 15 Friends, 42 Supporters, and 23 patrons sponsors. Let's give all of our sponsors a big round of applause. We could not do it without them. Now, word to the sponsors, get ready 
to hear moving testimonies from three students who would just like to say thank you by sharing their life-changing stories. Also to Matt Hanner and Motion House Media, excellent job capturing what the scholarships mean to those deserving students. Thank you so kindly. Let's run the video. I recently, got, I recently married. got married and my husband passed September the 6th of last year. We had only been married eight months and he had some underlying health issues, but what initially caused his death was a massive heart attack. So I have made it my mission to become a nurse on the cardiac unit. With him passing, like I said, I always go back to God because if you can back tell, I'm, I'm not religious, I have a relationship with God. And I just know that this is designed by him. He would not have put me in that position if he didn't feel like I would be strong enough to go through it. I have met some amazing people here. I have made some friends here, um, some instructors that just words of encouragement, their motivation, just going in their classrooms, uh, even with Dr. Jackson, last semester, I wanted to quit the program. I just felt like I couldn't go on. And something that she told me would stick with me for the rest of my life. She said, Katrina, don't throw in the towel. Not yet. She said, you just keep fighting. Don't throw it in just yet. And I'm glad I listened. Because if I had to stop last year, I wouldn't be in the second semester this year. Once I had applied for the scholarship, at the time I wasn't working and I needed a hand up and not a handout. And um, my goal is once I become a nurse, I want to give back. I believe in sowing seeds, paying it forward. And I make sure when I buy my books, I get them brand new. I take good care of them because once I complete the program, after the first semester, when I know that that student is focused and they're gonna progress, I want to give all my books, all my notes, everything that I've taken and donate that to another student so they won't have to worry about books. There were a very select few people that I led around me. Uh, one of the people that all around me was an unsymptomatic carrier, didn't have any symptoms whatsoever. And I started getting sick. My entire family started getting sick. And I'm the only one that ended up real bad. I went from, oh, it feels like I have a cold to four days later. I couldn't say one word without having to take like a wheezing breath. And my oxygen dropped below 80. And so I went to the hospital and um, they said I had double pneumonia. And they're like, you can go home or you can stay here and be put on oxygen. And I just didn't feel comfortable. I, just, I couldn't breathe. And so I ended up staying there almost a week. Professors I had here were absolutely amazing. And I couldn't have gotten by without them, especially uh, Miss Cannon at uh, the graphic design department. And then also when I got sick, I'm a person that I'm a perfectionist, and I've always wanted to make you know the best grades in my classes. And um, I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for a few teachers who are like, "Oh, you're sick. You're in the hospital. You don't even have to worry about taking a final." Dr. Bird was one of them, and they're like, "You know, you've done good this so far up to this point. Get better." And it was a great relief. Just, I loved being on this campus. It's very, it's like they got to know their students and they weren't just a number. The grant through the foundation, I had pale and I'm like an untraditional student, I'm older. And they told me that I was no longer gonna be receiving pale. So I applied for the grant to not have to take out loans or put everything on a credit card and stuff like that, just because that's a lot at once. But uh, it greatly helped me. I was able to graduate without having to take out any loans from here. The foundation is a lifesaver and it's, giving people hope when they think, oh, I can't do this. There's, I have so much going on in my life. And it makes it just a little bit easier to be able to not have to worry about things as much. I applied for the CDC Foundation Scholarship. I had applied for what would pay for my books because I have financial aid and I thought that would pay for my classes and that would pay for what I need. But other than that, I didn't want to ask for much because there are people who are less fortunate, who need money, who can't always work, and they just need that help so that they can pay their expenses. I feel like every time I have a problem, like say, I don't know what classes to take, I can always go to someone and they can tell me, hey, 
this is what you need to do, this is a help, what will help you, and say I'm struggling, I'm having a hard time with this class. They have that tutoring option available also, which is really helpful, and there's one-on-one -on -one always. My absolute dream is I want to be delivering babies. My nephew was born with uh, gastroschisis. It's a condition where your intestines are born on the outside of your body through your belly button because your umbilical cord is detached. And he was in the NICU for about six months. And just being there and watching the nurses interact with those kids and helping them and just being there for the families also, that emotional support, watching your baby go through something so traumatic that you can't do anything about. And as a nurse, you, you're the one that's there that's holding them. You're the one that's comforting them. You're the one that's gonna help them. And I just wanna be that comfort for them like people have done for me. My rock was my grandfather. And my grandfather passed away in 2016. And that's when I will say I hit rock bottom. I lost him due to suicide. And I blamed myself for a really long time. It was just really hard because you're sitting there and you're like, what could I have done different? He was my rock. I should have been his. And that's what this foundation has done for me. It's helped me and been my rock to get me through school. not touch your heart. I want to give back. I want to pay it forward. The foundation is my rock. I mean, the testimonies tell the story. We thank you so much. You've heard firsthand the difference the foundation, the scholarships make in the lives of students. They are the reason we're here this evening. Now, get ready to enjoy a video of Smith's Station High School Jazz Ensemble as they perform their version of a Freddie Herbert jazz classic, Red Clay.
and has worked at both the university and community college levels. On February the 1st, 2018, she became the sixth president of the Chattahoochee Valley Community College, CVCC, in Phoenix City, Alabama. During her 32-year tenure in the Alabama Community College system, Spruce has been actively involved in numerous activities and has shared her time and talents with a myriad of statewide and committees and initiatives. Screws has served as an active board member for numerous educational and community organizations in Barbara and Russell counties. She's a member of the Phoenix City Rotary Club and serves as a member of the Board of Directors for the United Way of the Chattahoochee Valley, Sonovus Bank, East Alabama, and the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission of Colleges. Screws has a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master of education in student personnel administration, both from Tuskegee University. In her spare time, she loves to watch HGTV, shop, travel, and spend time with her family. She has also devoted much of her time to her church, the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church in Pittsview, Alabama, and to her sorority, the Columbus Metropol Metropolitan Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Screws has been married to her husband, Larry Screws, for 32 years, and they have two beautiful daughters. President Screws is a resilient woman on a mission who lives the rotary motto, service above self. Please join me in welcoming President Jackie Screws to the podium. Team members 
our students who believe in us, and our community partners. Some of the events related to COVID-19 have shaken our very spirits, but we have persevered and found many silver linings in this dim situation. In spite of COVID-19, we are proud that we are still Pirate Strong. Being able to pull off this program this evening is a great example of a silver lining because it is so meaningful and so important to what we do as educators. Proceeds from tonight's event will go to provide scholarships for needy and deserving students at our college. And that makes this program and everything we do very worthwhile. I would be remiss in my duties if I did not recognize some groups of people who are vital to the success of the college. First, I want to personally thank the foundation board members. I know that they have been recognized before, but the work that they do provides advocacy and support for the many things we do here at the college, and we cannot thank them enough. During the 2019-20 academic year, the CDCC Foundation awarded more than $59,000 in scholarship funds to more than 80 students. And that is an accomplishment that deserves some recognition. So join me in congratulating them on that tremendous work. <laughs> to our sponsors, this year's response to our foundation fundraising event has been amazing and has resulted in the largest, largest amount that we have raised in the history of the Hall of Fame program. And I am just so proud that this is a feat that was able to be pulled off in the midst of a pandemic. We are very proud of that. The sponsors are noted in your program and they have also been recognized on the screen. So we hope that you will remember them. And if you know them or see them in the community, we hope that you will join us in thanking them for their support. We thank all of them for answering our call and for embracing the adage that to whom much is given, much is required. We also want to thank the Smith Station High School Jazz Band and the Central High School Music Department for providing the entertainment tonight. They do an amazing job. They support us in so many ways, and it is only fitting that they be here tonight to support us in this event. Lastly, I want to congratulate our honorees. To Coach O'Neill, Mayor Bubba Copeland, Mayor Eddie Lowe, you have shown true servant leadership in your professions, and in your communities. You have generously given of yourselves, and we want you to know that we are proud to welcome you into the CDCC Hall of Fame. Let's give our honorees a round of applause. At this time, I will turn the program back over to our beautiful MC for the evening, Ms. Teresa Whitaker. Thank you so much, President Spruce. This is the moment that we have all been waiting for. You know, we have a mantra here at CDCC. You can start here and go anywhere. And our three inductees tonight are classic examples of doing well where they have gone. So let's give our inductees another warm round of applause. The Hall of Fame here at CDCC began back in 2008, and since then, 82 people have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. That's a lot of folks that are doing well out there who got their beginnings right here at CDCC. In the past eight years, and that includes this year, 2021, this event, which is the largest fundraiser for scholarships, has netted $470,000, over $470,000. So let's give our sponsors 
and those who have donated a nice warm round. Come on. Over $470,000. That's what we able people to be able to further their education. So tonight there are three categories, and we're going to begin with the Distinguished Athlete category. And to make that presentation, please welcome Vicki Williams, the Associate Dean of Student Success. Good evening. To be nominated to the CBCC Hall of Fame in the category of Distinguished Athlete, the athlete must have completed their tenure at CBCC no less than eight years prior to the current induction year. The nominee must have had an outstanding single season performance, career performance, or have had outstanding post-CBCC athletic accomplishments. This year's inductee has accomplished all of the above. He was described by his former coach, Adam Thomas, as one of the greatest pitchers in Chad Valley's baseball history. The 2021 inductee in the category of Distinguished Athlete is Coach Michael O'Neill. Please play the video. It's just been like a dream of mine always growing up. I would just be in the backyard or be in the living room throwing a tennis ball against the wall and catching it and pretending like I'm in a professional baseball situation. Um, so for me, like that was always, everything I did kind of revolved around baseball growing up. When Michael O'Neill graduated from high school in 2010, he was looking for an opportunity to play baseball at the next level, but he wasn't receiving many offers. I come over to throw a bullpen for Coach Thomas and Coach O'Neill, and they tell me I can walk on. I was like, thank you. Like I, At this point, I didn't really have anything else going for me. So that whole summer leading up to see, um, August, I worked out every day with Coach Thomas. I made my body basically look better, um, more athletic. Um, and I truly learned like how hard work, um, how hard you need to work to be successful in college. Hard work made O'Neill a standout at CVCC and throughout the state, region, and country. He won the Alabama Community College Conference Pitcher's Triple Crown, leading the league in wins, earned run average, and strikeouts. For his efforts, he earned all ACCC and National Junior College Athletic Association All-American that season. O'Neill is grateful for all that he's accomplished at CVCC and beyond, and he credits that success with a nurturing environment that was evident in the smallest of ways. Mom and grandmother, they came to every game. Uh, my grandmother made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and she would give them out between games. Um, and she was basically the team grandmother almost, and it was Coach Thomas still to this day will talk about the PB&J that my grandmother makes. Um, it's awesome for me, just like everything about CVCC, the family aspect, um, being close, but also like Coach Thomas being like a huge father figure to me, keeping us in line, making sure that, you know, like we weren't doing the wrong things off the field. Like we were in line, we were behaving, but we also like had our fun and knew like where that line was. Upon graduating from CVCC, O'Neill signed a scholarship to Auburn University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in exercise science. His time in the Tiger baseball uniform earned him a spot with the Atlanta Braves, and he played in the minor league for four years. Now he's a pitching development coach for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's responsible for creating and developing plans to enhance players' pitching movement using technology and biomechanical data. After professional baseball, I was like, well, you know, Coach Thomas, Coach O'Neill, they like meant so much to me. Like they kind of saw me when nobody else saw me. And I was like, I want to be a coach. It's very motivated to basically just make an impact with as many people as I can. And I know coaching, I get a chance to work with 30 plus pitchers every year. And that motivates me to like, kind of just be that figure for them to like think back and be like, you know, Mike really cared about me and that he really wanted me to be successful. He really gave me the tools to be successful and he showed me kind of where I can 
enhance myself, but also how to take care of myself and become a better man. Um, any advice I'd give the guys or anybody out there is that you can really achieve anything you set your mind to. No matter where you are in life, you can basically become anything you want to and you can achieve anything you want to. Words of wisdom to live by for everyone at every age. service to the college service area, community of 
of Residence and or CBCC. This year's inductee in the Distinguished Alumni category has been serving the Phoenix City Smith Station area his entire life. This CBCC alumnus has a true servant's heart, and his mission in life is to serve others by supporting and enhancing the community where he lives, as you will see in the following video. Station Mayor F. L. Bubba Copeland wasn't sure exactly where he wanted to end up after graduation, but he knew he wanted to attend college. After competing in a drama competition where he recited Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, he received a scholarship from Chattahoochee Valley Community College. I went to Chattahoochee Valley Community College on a drama scholarship uh, in that period of time, and it was an opportunity for me to grow as myself, and we had some wonderful productions. We did a lot of productions the children's theater around the schools around the area. Copeland graduated from CBCC in 1994 with an associate degree in business. In 1997, he graduated from Auburn University with a degree in hotel and restaurant management. In addition to his role as mayor, he serves as minister of First Baptist Church in Phoenix City and owner and operator of his business, The Country Market in Salem, Alabama. Well, my family's been in the grocery business my entire life. And so I knew that I wanted to be in business, and then so I went into the grocery business. And uh, some, so some of my business classes ultimately helped me in that direction. Copeland says his experience at CBCC helped lay a good foundation for his success. His relationship with instructors and staff members made all the difference. When I, I didn't understand an equation, they would, they would be there. Um, if I had a, an issue that I could not be there, they would help me work through the, the issues. It was a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mayor Copeland is the kind of man who rolls up his sleeves and gets to work. This was most evident in the aftermath of the devastating tornadoes that hit his hometown and surrounding areas in March of 2019. It was overwhelming. There's no book, there's no training, there's no thing that you could ever see in your life that you can go through. Before, we were literally digging people out of homes. Homes were homes were gone. Volunteers come from all over the United States. It was a life-changing changing event, but I'm so thankful that I was able to go through it because it made me stronger, and it also uh, showed me the resilience and the human spirit. That spirit is what left the greatest impression on Mayor Copeland. The East Alabama Chamber of Commerce recognized him Individual of the Year for his leadership during the crisis. But he says the award is not his alone. We had a little over 4,000 volunteers at Smith Station. We had people that spent the night in tents, we had people that spent the night in cars, under cars. The whole area was completely saturated with volunteers. Not wanting any money, just wanting what can I do to help. As a man of faith, Copeland says he knows the volunteers were a blessing from God and that there were lessons to be learned from the tragedies of the tornadoes. I want to challenge you to remember, we're not as divided as people think we are. And it's our responsibility to go above and beyond as human beings to love one another. And if we can love one another, this world will be a lot better place. Mayor Bubba Copeland, husband, father, pastor, entrepreneur, showing leadership through love.
upon receiving this award, I'm given a very unique opportunity to elaborate on the perils of struggling student. Someone that is not sure what their future holds. Someone that attended CBCC and that's where I was. An average CD student, a student that has no idea what the future holds, no idea what direction to take in life. I challenge you to consider a junior college. I challenge you to start somewhere where you're able to find a foundation where people love you and you're able to develop relationships. If you're a kid who had low self-esteem like I was, I found my place. Through three, through, through three theater, I had a theater scholarship, I was able to find my way in life and find my purpose. And I've learned that way of serving leadership. Giving yourself away makes you a better person. It only makes you a better person, it makes you a better leader. That quality and work and hard work has led me to where I am today. Through my experience in the grocery business as a manager, employee, through my ministry as a youth minister for some 20 years, now pastor for over five years, as an elected official of the school board in Lee County for 13 years, and now mayor for the past five years. I've always done my best to maintain servant leadership. It is my approach each and every circumstance to help others grow, both personally in their roles in development and along their way as individuals. I'm deeply humbled, and I appreciate this work, this award. And I close with my life mantra, and I want to challenge every student that steps into CBCC and every person in this building. No matter what anyone says, show up and do the work. If they praise you, show up and do the work. If they criticize you, show up and do the work. If no one notices you, just show up and do the work. Just keep showing up, doing the work, and leading the way. Lead with passion, have faith, maintain hope, be stubborn, fight the good fight, refuse to give up, ignore the critics, believe in the impossible, show up and do the work. You'd be glad you did. True grit leads to true success. In conclusion, I want you to know one thing. Jesus loves you, and I do too. The youngest of six children, Phoenix City Mayor Eddie Lowe, grew up in a household where putting others first was a lesson demonstrated in everything the family did. The neighborhood, all the kids hung out at our house. My mom, she raised a lot of kids that were not hers. And I can remember her, you know, pouring everyone some Kool-Aid and bend down on the, to look at the table to see was it all even because she didn't want to give one more than the other. I grew up with my parents, outstanding people. They had an education, not a formal education, yes. 
They knew how to treat people. They knew work ethics. Didn't have a whole lot, but they knew how to make it a lot. That foundation has served Mayor Lowe well in life. He is a proud 1978 graduate of Central High School. He then attended the University of Alabama and played football under the legendary Paul William Bear Bryant. Lowe says his time on the football field at Alabama reinforced what his parents had taught him and it prepared him for the next phase of his life. It was a blessing for me to play at the University of Alabama and to be able to play for Coach Bryan because there are so many things that uh, I use even in my work that I learn from him and how I apply it because we're all dealing with people. After graduating from the University of Alabama with a degree in finance, Lowe had the opportunity to play Canadian football. But before he left for camp, he had some unfinished business to take care of with his high school sweetheart, Deborah. I went to her and then asked, I said, listen, we gotta get married because I don't wanna leave the country. She was able to plan a wedding in three or four weeks. And uh, best thing I did, uh, one of the best things I did was to marry her. Lowe would come home in the off season and work at the bank to keep his skills sharp. After nine years of playing in Canada, they decided to come home. From that standpoint, uh, got involved with a lot of things in the community, and I've just always have learned through playing football, it's about the team, and it's about you making the person on the team look better than you. Lowe has served as mayor of Phoenix City since 2012. One of his favorite projects is the Mayor's Ball, in which money raised from the event helps provide scholarships for college, including support for students in dual enrollment courses at CVCC. It, it was started, my wife and I just wanted to do something to help and give to our kids that will have an opportunity to, you know, get an education. Uh, that have a chance to have a quality of life. Of all the lessons Mayor Lowe has learned along the way, what he hopes people see most in him and will pass on to others is love. You have to love people. I genuinely love people. Uh, I genuinely want to see people do well and do good and have opportunity uh, to do well.
thankful for keeping me centered uh, because without her, I could not accomplish and do the things that I, I'm able to do. And I, I certainly want to thank you for that and say I love you so very, very much. 38 long years and we've done it without Dr. P. We're going to continue to move on. But service, you know, we have created to be an example of giving of yourselves for the right reason. As I stated, I was taught that when you do something, you do it and don't look for anything, not even thank you. And we always talk about service, and it's so, so important that we as a community continue to give of ourselves for the sake of our community, for the sake of people. And when we do that, there's a lot of time it can get questioned on you doing it for the right reason. But let me say this and share this with you. Keep serving. Keep giving of yourself. Because the quickest way to get ahead, individually, collectively, and or as a community, is to build other people up. Put them first. It works. And I want to challenge everyone to continue to be servants. Now, there's going to be time where you're going to get criticized if you're doing it for the right reason. But three things I always tell you. Keep doing it. Because your motives that you're doing to serve will be purified. Just keep, just keep grinding away. Keep serving. Keep giving for the right reason. Your motives will be purified. And as you're giving and continue to give, sometimes you get tired and you, you back and get weak. But guess what? The more you do it, the more you chop at it, the more you hit, challenge it, your backbone becomes solidified. You become stronger. But even more important than that, just keep giving. Keep thinking about the others. Keep doing it for the right reason because we all rise. And when you keep doing that, just keep doing that and giving. Your calling, your calling will stand the test of time because you're doing it for the right reason. Yes, we do serve because we love people. And that's a great reason. But the chief motivation of serving is because you love God. Because you can't love people without loving God. So let's continue to build people up. Love. Thank you so much. Alabama, 
Elizabeth T. Cohen, Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, Houston Clinic, I Heart Media, Thesis, W.C. Brantley Company, and West Rock. Our blue sponsors are Alabama Power Foundation, Motion House Media. And again, a big thank you to our 11 pirates, 15 friends, 42 supporters, and 23 patrons sub sponsors. To our guests, thank you for joining us this evening, and I certainly hope you enjoyed every moment of the celebration. You know, it takes a lot of moving parts and a lot of behind the scene activities to pull off an event of this caliber. To President Screws, Dr. Watkins, CVCC staff, and the CVCC Foundation, great job on another successful Hall of Fame celebration. And finally, to those joining us virtually, there's an opportunity to donate via the website if you would like to make a contribution to the foundation and our students. The online auction closes tonight at 11.59. Please check your bid to make sure you remain the top bidder. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and good evening.